What is up, Internet World, and welcome back to Accelerate. I'm Mike Heasy, and today we're bringing the 2024 BMW Sebring. Huh? I'm in the 2024 BMW 430i Convertible X-Drive. Now this is a two liter turbocharged four banger that makes 255 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. So we're gonna see what this thing does to 60. I will put my sport button on. I'm in sport, using these fancy gauges. I will hold stability program off. Okay, I lost my little thingamajiggy that makes it quieter, hopefully. All right. For the ground, let's get launch control and go. Ooh, not bad, not bad. Not bad, not bad. 6.36. That wasn't very fast. Give me launch control. Okay, owner's manual. Close. Hold this button down. Traction control off. There we go. DSC active and. All right. Try launch control this time. And. Nope. The ground. Do we got it? Do we got it? Nope. I'm in sport. All the sport modes. Foot to the ground and come on, launch control. Give it to me. No, it's not giving it to me. We'll do this anyways. Still not bad. Still not bad. Launched pretty well. And 6.17. But I still feel like we can be faster. Launch control worked. What is going on? All right, third time's a charm. Let's get this launch control. Launch control active. And go. Okay. Can we beat? Can we break the sixes? No. 6.2. So obviously you do get more power when you get the 40 version as opposed to the 30 version. But still, this is decent. Decent. Because when you buy a convertible, you're not really focused on performance. What you're looking for is a comfortable ride and no squeaks. Especially when you over bumps because the chassis rigidity is so key. Because usually they're really stiff or they're really soft and then really clunky and noisy. So it's that balance. So that's what we're going to find out. Is this thing comfortable and smooth? All right, so that makes it slightly slower than a Mazda CX-90 and just a bit faster than a 6,000 pound Lexus LX600. So when I used to work at Audi, I sold Audi A5s to two types of people. The older folk and people that just got divorced. They want to feel free and single, and a convertible seems to do that without a lot of frills. So today we bring you the 4 Series Convertible. This is how it goes. You can get a two-wheel drive version in the 430i and an X-Drive version, which means it's four-wheel drive. Then you can get the 440i convertible with a bit more power in a rear-wheel drive format or a four-wheel drive format. And then the top dog, the M4 competition convertible. That's a lot of money, so we're gonna focus on this, the base one with four-wheel drive in San Remo metallic green. However, for those that want to look at the 440i convertible, you get a 3 liter turbocharged that makes 382 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. And if you get the M4 convertible, then you get 473 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque. And they both have 3 liter motors. All right, so the front of this BMW 430i convertible. Not as exciting as this X5M, obviously, but it's all good. This is a halo car for some people because in Canada, this car costs around $81,000. No chump change, so there's some value here, so let's talk about it. You have the BMW emblem on the top. There's value. You have a camera right there above the license plate. That's value. This chrome around this kidney grill, 
in my opinion. It is a different look with these four series than the three series, so let's focus on these headlights. You've got these lower eyebrow style DRLs just below the projectors. And then on the side here, you have this little thing that says BMW LED. Now you do have some functional vents because again, this is a BMW. This is no regular car. BMW fans will say it's still a BMW. It is fancy and it is but it's a lot of money. So as far as quality goes, this is built in Germany and take a look at this engine bay. It has the actual emblem of BMW right on the engine cover. Of course, one, two, three, four, designating this is a four cylinder with twin power turbos. Look at the strut bars. Everything is really tight, clean, and of course, German. And this is what you're paying for. To the side, very, very clean lines as I look at it. This is the part I will say looks really good compared to the front in my opinion. This does have some M Sport stuff like the brakes in blue, the wheels in 19s as opposed to 18s when you don't get this option, and of course a variable steering, so that is a thumbs up. This green is a nice color on this car in my opinion. Obviously more sporty stuff I prefer, but hey, it's very clean. You do have a camera right there, color matched green mirror caps, a lot of black, no chrome, thank God. They didn't copy the front to the side. And then of course, when you look at it, I will tell you it does have 49.9% front to rear body weight ratio. It's supposed to be 50-50, but they can crack the extra 0.1% because that is hiding in the back. So on the back here, you see this rear trunk lid. It's very rounded off. It has a third brake light built into it, so that is why this part here is very thick. It should be like a little bit smaller, like some of the old generation BMWs, but they've really thickened that part out, and they've had a little bit of a lip, but it looks very thick in my opinion. Anyways, the emblem especially thick. Take a look very, very deep and the camera's built right into it. So they've had to make things bigger to adapt for the brake light as well as the camera in this emblem. You have the X drive and of course, because it is a 430i, you've got your badging right there. Everything else is pretty straightforward, but they have added these lower valences because this is a sport version or an M sport package. Oh, thank you, seatbelt helper. Hmm. So if you don't know convertibles, you get this. Most convertibles will have this to pass through the seat belt so it's easy for it to be put on. Now the value here or the money spent is really on the interior. Very good quality. Everything I look at, the contrast back to my eyes is perfect. Take a look at the wood trim on the dash itself. It has a nice satin finish. It's not super shiny, it's not super dull. Really good piece there. Even the exposed or natural feeling wood on the center console. Every button is really, really tight together. The spacing is perfect. These are all the things that make a BMW a BMW. When you get inside it, you know that they've put money, research, and quality of materials behind it. This is not really a sales pitch. It's just something that I see with my eyes. Obviously, the outside is pretty boring to me, but inside here, I'll say that all the quality is really good. So if we start with the door panel here, you see all the buttons have this sort of satin chrome finish to them. They're not made from metal, they are plastic, but they have the appearance of metal or aluminum. You have the speaker grill right tapped between the handle and where the window switches are. Then you have one spot for a big water bottle, you have a button to open up the trunk, and then of course at the top you have your Harman Kardon sound system. The dash is all black with heads up display and BMW's newest screens, you've got 14.9 and 12.3 in front of me. We've done a whole bunch of BMWs, so these screens have been heavily, heavily, heavily talked about in some of our other videos. And if you haven't watched them, please go ahead and do so. You do have dual climate control, you do have paddle shifters on the steering wheel. With the M on the bottom, you have the heated steering wheel button, and you even have stitching around the airbag section right in the center. On the left, I do have all my cruise control buttons, and on the right, I have all my audio and voice activation buttons. In the center here, I have two big vents. You do have one rotary knob, some buttons to go backwards and forwards for your audio, and then of course, front defrost and rear defrost. Under this panel, I do have a wireless charger, a USB, two big cup holders. Gone are the days of the big clunky shifter. You now have a little tiny toggle, just like Porsche, for your reverse neutral drive sport. As far as putting it to park, it's a button. You push down on it. You do have your sport, comfort, and of course, Eco Pro. Then you have the most important button here, which or toggle, which is really just to open and close the top. You do get these fancy seats with an air scarf for the passenger and the driver. And to activate that, you hit this button and you have three increments of that, just like the heated seats. 
Now, one of the concerns for people that buy convertibles is storage space. And how much storage do you actually get in this car? I would say the glove box is a decent size. This center console is not the largest. And yeah, that's my story about storage. You do get an extra USB-C in here though. Does that count? So how much room do you have in the back of the 430i? Well, voila, there you go. Pretty standard stuff when you buy a convertible. This little plate or plastic cover does fold in when the top is up because the top is down. This space is required to hide the top. How much room do you have? As far as width goes, you have 40 inches. And as far as depth goes, you have 39, almost 40. Now this load floor doesn't come up, it's fixed. You cannot store anything underneath it. You do have some storage on the side here and a little bit of storage on that side, but there's one key here. You do have a pass through for skis, but the seats also fold down and it's really intuitive where they have put the wind deflector. When I pull the seats down, take a look at where the wind deflector is hiding. There you can see this is for your pass through and look right there. This whole thing comes down and that is your wind deflector storage. Really, really cool. I haven't seen that ever before and I do like some of the thought process behind it. Now, as far as convertibles go, there's a lot of room in this back seat. I can easily tell you that because I'm standing right over it looking down. And if you wanna see a video or shots of the top going up and down, take a look. Now in comparing to the A5, this does have some bolstering to it. These seats were actually given some thought. You do have two cup holders here and then a top tether anchor on both for the left and the right. I do have a little bit of climate control down here and then of course two vents and then the Harman Kardon sound left to right. That stuff's pretty straightforward. And sitting back here, I always find that convertibles are pretty 90 degrees. This is sort of 90 degrees, but not as like stiff as some. Just ask any Porsche owner, they'll tell you. So I'm doing about 45 miles an hour now and it's very smooth, quiet, comfortable, everything I kind of would expect. Very similar to an Audi A5 convertible. This seems to be a hair quieter. Now, of course, when I worked at Audi, that was about three years ago. So the tech on the Audis have improved. Very comfortable, very quiet. And it's really designed for people that just want the convertible vibe without all the power in the world. Passing power, but not like performance power. So now I'm doing 45 kilometers an hour and let's put the top up and see how it operates. Now the top is coming down right above my head because I can hear that sound. There it is, it comes down, clippity clip, clappity clap. Wow, it's really quiet in here. This has really good sound deadening. And when I touch it, it feels like an interior cabin piece, not just like, you know, a vinyl top. This feels like a hard top, not a soft top. I know people want to have a hard top and something like this, but it really kills trunk room. So I understand why they've done it because, you know, it's German. And most German vehicles usually have soft tops, not hard tops, usually speaking. These are single pane windows, not dual pane, but with the windows up and this top, it makes a monster difference. The, to me, it's this top that's been really like adjusted to make it quieter in here. And when I go over bumps, it doesn't feel like convertible. I don't have like half the body shaking. It's good. So how about visibility? With the top down, it's amazing. Obviously there's nothing blocking me. There's no B pillar. There is nothing. I can turn my head around, very easy to see. Now, of course, when the top is up, it's a little bit of a story because I do have a fairly big C pillar. You know what that is? The A pillar is the front, the B pillar is the middle, and the C pillar is the back. It has a fairly wide C pillar, but it does have a pretty big rear glass window. So I no longer have to just try to figure out how to see behind me by looking at these side mirrors. I can actually see pretty clearly through this rear view mirror to the back. It doesn't have a rear view mirror camera, but it does have a pretty big glass in the back and the headrests don't bother. Now on all four series convertibles, you can get remote start. So if you are worried about driving convertible in the winter, or of course you can get all wheel drive. If you get remote start, when you jump in, it's nice and warm. I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Some people do worry about the windows, but most coupes now actually are all glass. They don't have a full frame. So don't worry about that. I think that answers that piece of it because it's always like, hey, can I buy a convertible in the winter? How is it in the winter? It's convertible. 
Well, you have to worry about it because you've got this really good sound top and you have remote start. And of course you have a heated steering wheel, even in this M Sport steering wheel. So that's all good. Seats are excellent. That's it for my review on this base BMW M340i. Of course it's not base because it's filled with a bunch of toys, but it's not the Jam Jam M4 convertible. So I hope you guys like this video. As always, thanks for your support. And if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so. And we'll catch you on the next one.